Hey, and good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Well, spring has sprung. As you can see, the flowers are blooming. It's just beautiful down here. We're in the shop today, and we're going to tackle this little project right here. It's a mid-century modern style coffee table. It's by the Northwest Chair Company out of Tacoma, Washington. They went out of business in the early 50s. We bought this from the son of the original owners, along with some other pieces from the same set. And uh, he tells us his mom and dad bought these in the early 1950s. They've been in the family ever since. So come on in, I'll show you what we're working with. And here it is. You can see it's just a round circular coffee table. It's in pretty good shape. I've already re-glued one of the loose legs. But uh, what this video is going to focus on is how we're going to handle the top. Now, whenever we make a decision about what we're going to do with the piece, and we've talked about this before on the channel, we have to decide what we think its value is and how we're going to sell it and to what customer base. This is a mid-century style, but it's maple. It's American, and it's not the kind of uh, piece, in my opinion, that warrants a full restoration because it's not going to bring that much money. Maybe, maybe two hundred bucks, maybe two fifty, uh, three hundred on a really good day if a mid-century fanatic sees it. So what we're going to try to do is keep as much of the original finish as we can, and just get rid of the problems. For example, here we have what looks to be latex paint. If we shoot, and you can see there, you can see all the scratches and wear in the lacquer top. Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with this. And then over here, probably the trickiest part to uh, take care of is this lack of color all the way down to the wood that's here and here and then we've got some scratches. So this is going to be a video about how we're going to handle touching up this top so that when someone looks at it, it looks like it's in great shape, because it will be, but we're going to leave pretty much the base and the wear on the base as it is. We'll clean it up and we will uh, we'll touch out some color on the base and wax it. So that's what we're going to do. Stick with us. Here we go. I often get questions on what I use to clean furniture and I think it's one of those things that we sometimes overthink normally what I'll do is I'll mix up a solution with some trisodium phosphate in it this is a good uh, solvent for oil based dirt Dawn dishwashing detergent I can't tell you that Dawn is better than Palmolive or some other brand but I've always used Dawn and it works fine for me uh, I often will mix in some crud cutter again. This is a commercial cleaner degreaser. I've had real good luck with it. You got to be careful about using it full strength on furniture. Sometimes it will take finish off. It's uh, it's pretty effective also on removing uh, latex paint spots from furniture. But use it carefully. And then as far as for odors, these are the two things that I use the most. This is Odoban, which is a commercial uh, odor disinfectant. It it works fine. Personally, I don't like the smell very much. Uh, it used to really stink. This this smells much better. But it's this has a lavender scent, by the way. But it it it, uh, it still has an off odor to me, and it's it's not the product's fault. We used to have a believe it or not, a boa constrictor that I had as a pet when the girls were growing up so that they would learn not to be afraid of reptiles, and neither one of them are as adults. But when he, uh, we had to clean out his cage, it was a fairly unpleasant experience, and we used Otoban to kill the odors, and I think that uh, that may be one of the reasons why I still don't really care for this smell very much. What I do care for smell-wise is this Pine Sol Lavender Clean. My wife started using this in the house on the floors and I just think it smells nice so I use this uh, frequently when I'm doing furniture. 
So there's a lesson on what I use to clean furniture. The key is, in my opinion, to get the cleaning solution on and then get it off. Don't let it set on the finish. Don't let the water set on the finish. Get it scrubbed down and dried off and I think you'll be fine. So let's get this, uh, this piece outside and let's get it clean. Okay, we got my grandmother's stainless steel bucket. She was so proud of this. And I just, exceptionally imprecise, I really don't worry very much about how much of anything goes in here. It's just a cleaning solution. It's not uh, fuel for the space shuttle, if you know what I mean. I let the water going in mix it up for me. That's enough. We're ready to go to work. Well, last night when I put this piece in the shop, I checked these legs to make sure they were tight, because as you know, these old pieces of furniture, the glue often fails, and, and they appeared to be, but now that I've got it flipped up, look what we're dealing with here. So we're going to clean this piece, then it's all going to have to be re-glued, and then we'll get on with the refinishing. So let's get cleaning. So we get some of our solution. I've got a Scotch-Brite green pad here. I get these at the local discount store. They're fairly inexpensive, believe it or not. And we start to scrub. And then, like I say, I don't leave it set very long get it off before it clouds or compromises the finish. And all it took was a, just a couple of minutes and that bottom's all cleaned up, but boy is it loose. We got some work ahead of us. I'm not sure what these white thing, these white spots are. They came off really easy. They may have been uh, just drywall smears. Or they could have been uh, a little bit of paint. There's kind of a sad story associated with this furniture. Uh, the original owners passed away and for about 10 years uh, in their house lived one of their children, a woman, and she passed away and the surviving other children came into the house for the first time since they'd lost their parents because the one sister didn't want them in the house and they discovered she was a hoarder and uh, cleaning this furniture was an important part of what I had to do once we we bought it uh, unfortunately she uh, she didn't do a very good job uh, cleaning anything so this stuff probably went 10 years without ever being cleaned okay that's how we do it. You can see the cloudiness in the lacquer coat. We're, we'll wet sand that off, but uh, we got to get this inside and get it glued up before we do anything else. So let's do that next. And if you remember, this was clear water with a cleaning solution in it. You can see how discolored this is from the dirt that we got off of there. My grandmother used to call this juice. <laughs> My grandmother. We've got the legs all marked. This is all marked. Let's see if we can get this knocked apart. And unfortunately, I just re-glued this joint right here last night. So that one may not come apart. But let's see. Let's see what happens here. This is when you wish you hadn't done such a good job. This one had been re-glued prior and it came right apart. That's the one we just did and it's, it's really in there. 
I really don't want to heat it up if I don't have to. There we go. And there's really very little glue in this joint or on that uh, on that tenon. All right, I am going to clean out these joints. We'll regrue the legs, reattach that uh, adder brace thing, and set this aside to dry, and then we'll get back at it uh, probably tomorrow. So stand by. When it comes to getting the glue off the tenons, again, you know, the big pieces you can use a little chisel or a little, in this case it's a little carving tool that I use on the other side, and scrape it off. If you have a lot of glue along the sides, you know, you can abrade it off the same way. Some guys will use a file, some guys will use sandpaper. Uh, I try to keep the shape of this as pristine as I can so the fit stays tight. But, um, like I say, you can use all those different tools if, if you so desire. Okay, everything's been cleaned off. All the old glue's been scraped out. It's been blown out with the uh, compressed air. Let's start to put this old girl back together. This corner right here, number four, had a prior repair and this was broken and it didn't fit very well before I took this apart and I was kind of hoping it would go back together and it did not. So what I wound up having to do was to carve out a lot of this dado here, this hole, which had been cut at an angle but had glue and wood in it that was preventing this from closing. So because it's a loose fit, what I'm going to do is use some epoxy putty as an adhesive here to fill that in nice and tight. And that's, uh, that's taken care of. So Not the end of the world. Always happens when you glue up, I suppose. And the glue up went well. I, I used band clamps across diagonally on the two legs, if you can see that. Yeah, you should be able to see that. So here and here, diagonally, that pulls this frame nice and tight to the legs. And then I pounded the legs in nice and flush, cleaned up any of the glue squeeze out, set it on this table, which is flat because this is a piece of plywood, and then uh, put a cover on it and sat the, uh, the anvils on top of it to force, put pressure on the legs into the top. So that should take care of it. So we're gonna give that overnight to dry and then we'll come back and we'll start what we were supposed to do today. Again, I apologize. I uh, thought I had checked those legs last night and they were tight, but when we started to clean it, we found out they weren't and we're not going to pass that on to somebody with, uh, with loose legs. So it's taken care of. Let's just let it dry. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Let's take our anvils off and see how we did.
This was the troublesome joint that we used epoxy in. And you can see these legs are nice and flush. And this is rock solid, so yahoo for us. Okay, let's get working on the top. And here's an area of color loss on the edge of the table. And we're through the finish and through the color. The first thing I always want to make sure that I do is ease the transition between the old finish and the repair. What I have found is that if you leave that and don't seal that, you wind up with a line. When you put your color in there, it kind of wicks up in there and you wind up with a dark line. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand this with some 320 and hit this area and any other places where we've got color loss like this. And then I'm going to wet sand the entire top and then I'm going to come back and seal these areas here that are without color and then we're going to go ahead and do our touch up. So here we go. And what I'm using here is 320 gold on a block. And I'm trying to smooth the transition from the old finish to the repair. And we'll do that all along the table. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is just apply some soapy water as a lubricant. And we're going to wet sand this with 400 wet dry just to get that top layer of finish off. You can certainly do this by hand, but I have this air sander that I really like, so I'm going to use it. And here we are after the wet sanding, and then I wipe this down. This is the repair area here, and we've got some pretty substantial finish loss here in addition to the color loss. And then as uh, you look on the table, there are areas where it's cloudy, and uh, I wasn't sure that was going to come up, so I hit it with some no blush, and the cloudiness did go away. So this top, in my opinion, is right on the verge of needing a complete refinish, but let's let's try to patch it. It'll be a good lesson in, in, in coloring and coloring, touching out, and, uh, and, and filling in uh, and dents and things like that. Anybody that had this same job, you know, certainly could choose to refinish this top and it would probably even go faster than what we're going to do. But let's try to repair the finish. Well, the next step is to seal any of the bare wood. I'll take care of that right now. And to seal a project like this, you can either use a shellac or in this case, I'm going to use a lacquer based sealer. This is a heavy body sealer which means that it has a lot of solids in it and it builds up fairly quickly. So I'm going to choose to use the, uh, the lacquer sealer only because I'm, uh, I have it and I'm, I'm fairly used to using it. Mist a coat on and seal up any of that bare wood and hopefully the transition between the broken finish and the new finish won't soak up additional color and give you a black line. Okay, the uh, sealer has been dried and light sanded, ready to apply some color. I've got some nutmeg pigment here and some raw umber and I'm going to be applying it with, I'm going to try my best to show you what I'm doing here. I dip the brush in a little bit of the padding liquid, pick up some of the nutmeg and some of the brown And then very lightly, on it goes. And any place where there's existing color, if you overlap it, you're going to have a dark spot. And there's variations in the natural wood tones, of course, so you want to mimic the different tones in the wood. I'm holding this camera, by the way, while I'm doing this, so this is trying like heck to keep you in focus.
Okay, the camera is not it is showing this as being very much lighter, but in in fact, it's it's really not. But let me get this back in the stand and do some work on this, and I'll I'll bring it back and show you how to come out. Okay, I'm liking the way that's looking, so I'm going to mist a coat of shellac, spray a coat of shellac over it. That'll seal in that color. That looks really good. And we'll move on around the rest of the table the exact same way. And there's a super close-up of what we've got so far as far as the repair goes. And we got about 10 minutes into coloring out this table, and I think it came out pretty good. Uh, we just use that technique that I showed you with the colors that I showed you. We had a pretty big chip over here, right here, that we were able to get colored, and that'll look good once it's top coated. I got a couple of dings I want to fill before we top coat this, so let's get on to that next. And much like everything in this in this business, there's multiple ways of doing things. You can fill gouges with wax. You can uh, use you know burn-in sticks. In this case, I'm going to use a product called Hard Fill, which is basically it's a wax. I think probably a wax and epoxy mix. And I put it on with this little uh, battery-operated heat pen. If you look on eBay, you can see you can find these kits, these hard fill kits, if you're interested. And then uh, have this little plastic rasp. Takes it right down to the surface, and it's nice and smooth. And then you can follow that up with some really high grit sandpaper, or even a uh, like a gray pad. And work on it. Okay, I've got all the uh, little dents that I could find taken care of. What I'm doing now is just rubbing this down with a, uh, it's a 3M dark gray pad, which is, I don't know, I think it's one of their, it's it's the extra fine. I'm not sure how many sizes finer they have, but this is as fine as I go normally. Make sure you don't sand through your color, rub through your color. Okay, and the other thing this will do for you, see right there, there's a low spot that caught some dust. So it, it helps you identify the little chips that you may want to fill in. So let me finish up with all these the rest of these little chips, and then we'll start to top coat this thing, and we'll be done with it. Okay, I think I've got it pretty well taken care of now. Most of the uh, the chips and dings have been filled. We've got uh, it rubbed out with the Scotch Brite gray pad, and it's time to start to top coat it. I'm going to shoot a coat of shellac on this first, only because. I don't want to have any reaction with lacquer just in case there's silicone or other contaminants on this. I have scrubbed this off with naphtha. Could probably be fine just shooting this either directly with lacquer or with lacquer based sealer and then lacquer. But just to be double sure, I'm going to shoot it with a coat of shellac. So that's the next step. And we're ready to shoot shellac on it. I use uh, Zinzer seal coat, which is a de-waxed shellac, and I got it diluted a little bit with some denatured alcohol. Here we go. Okay, shellac coat's dry. Let's move on to sanding. Just going to use a gray pad. Go with the go with the grain. This is really just a very preliminary coat, so there's not too much to worry about here. Just smooth it out. Okay, I'm going to apply a seal coat, and when that dries, I'll light sand it and start building up coats of lacquer over the next few hours. Here we go. Now 
we've been in and out of the shop uh, three or four times. Uh, we've got the second coat of lacquer on it. It's got uh, two coats of sealer, two coats of lacquer on it so far. You know, the total time for a project like this may be like an hour and a half for everything. It's just that you shoot a coat and you have to go away for an hour or two, come back, light sand it, which takes, you know, two or three minutes. Shoot another coat, takes a couple minutes, and you go back inside and kill another hour and a half. But it's coming out really nice. It's coming out just the way we expected. It's, it's going to look great. It's going to look old, but uh, it'll look well cared for, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. Well, here's the end result. Like I said before, it's about an hour and a half's worth of work. I remember we had the big color. They were, it was through the color over there. But, uh, well, that's it. And now, of course, we get down here and look at those legs that we re-glued. I think this thing looks beautiful. I think we did just the right restoration on it. And I'm real happy the way it came out. I hope you guys can uh, use some of the information I shared with you. Uh, just another way of tackling a project. There's always lots of ways. I like this one. So thanks for hanging out with me while we took care of this little piece here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something found it worthwhile. Appreciate it if you'd like, comment, or subscribe. Help the channel grow. So from our shop just outside, whoa, whoa, whoa time out. A special shout out to George Keenan down in New Zealand who apparently watches my videos. He has a uh, restoration shop down in New Zealand, does tremendous work, and he's on a channel called The Flower Show Guy. Uh, he has a friend, I believe his name is John, who comes in and films some of his work and it's uh, really, really interesting to see the work he does. He's very good. So John and uh, George, thank you so much for mentioning the channel. I'm glad you enjoy it and uh, best to you down there in New Zealand. So anyways, from our shop here in Kennesaw in the USA, thanks for watching. Best regards. Remember, it's just wood, color, and some shiny stuff. We'll see you next video. Bye.